Most people are using Active Recall all wrong. And that's a big problem, right? Because Active Recall is the best study technique there is. Period. Proper utilization of Active Recall took me from a B student to an A student. And all of this was during medical school. I wish I had learned about using Active Recall properly in like high school or even college, because then I would have scored higher on every single test that I would have took. And also I would have learned more. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why most people are using Active Recall like all wrong, completely wrong. And I'm gonna give you the exact tips you need to make sure you're efficient and effective when using Active Recall. So let's talk about what is Active Recall. But first, before we even talk about what is Active Recall, let's talk about what isn't Active Recall. So rereading, highlighting, underlining, watching, listening. This isn't Active Recall. You, those things sound pretty easy to do, right? You can reread a book without taking much energy. You can listen to something. You can watch this video without committing much mental energy. It takes such little mental effort, in fact, that maybe while you're watching this video, you're also on your phone or eating a snack or talking to a friend because that's how little mental space it's taking up to watch this video. That's how little mental space passive learning takes up. But we want to take up mental space. We want to learn, and that's what Active Recall does. Real active recall is hard. It makes your brain work hard. You can't do a hundred other things when you're actually truly using active recall. Good active recall example are exams, right? Practice questions or flashcards. In one study, two groups of people were asked to remember as many names as possible in a party scenario. So imagine you're meeting tons of people and you have to remember as many of these people's names as you possibly can. Well, one group was made to study using active recall and practice testing, while the other one was told to study by just reading reading over the fact. The active recall group recalled 11.5 names, which is 57% on average, while the other group recalled 5.8 names, which is 29% on average. They were meant to try to remember 20 names, which means that the active recall group scored about 20% higher than the passive learning group. That's two letter grades. Finally, in one review article called Improving Students Learning, which looked at over 100 different other studies and referenced 100 other sources, looked at summarizing, active recall, practice tests, rereading, highlighting, underlining, and a couple other study techniques. And they came to the conclusion that there were two certain study strategies, which won among all of those other study strategies. And that was practice testing, which is a form of active recall, right? And distributed practice, which is another form of active recall. And guess which study methods they said were the worst study strategies to use? Yes, summarizing, highlighting, and rereading, all forms of passive learning. Now let's talk about making sure we're using it effectively and efficiently. The first thing I want to talk about is mindset. The first significant shift you need to make in using Active Recall correctly is to pay attention to your big old brain. Yes, the most calorie hungry organ in your entire body. Pay attention to how you feel when you're studying. Active Recall should feel tough. You should be able to tell you are doing Active Recall just by the feeling you have inside your brain. Watching this video is easy, right? That's passive learning. But thinking of the equation uh, 13 times 27, go ahead, try and figure it out. That's tough, right? You have to sit there and think about it. You can't be doing other things. 13 by times 27, if you're a normal human, takes a little bit of time to figure out in your head. You may even need to pause this video when figuring out the answer to that in your head just because of the mental effort it takes. Importantly, you can fall into the trap of having those active recall things, flashcards and practice testing actually become passive learning. Well, how does that happen? Well, this can happen, right? Which has happened to me. If you're not having true attempts at the practice questions or the flashcards, cards. For the practice questions, if you just say, oh, I don't know the answer, click an answer and then see the answer so you can read it all, right? That's just passive learning. You're just reading stuff. You're not actually testing your brain. And for the flashcards, if you don't know the answer, sometimes you'll just flip the card over, right, to see the answer without having a true attempt in your head, a true attempt to figure out what's going on. And that's what active recall is. If you're just flipping the flashcard, if you're just reading the practice question answers, then you're not really using active recall. And there are actually studies that show by just testing yourself, even if you have no idea what the answer is, your retention and your learning of that information goes way up compared to when you just flip the information over when you just see the answer. So for me, what I do is whenever I'm doing practice questions, I make sure to write down the answer somewhere. Maybe that's just A, or maybe that's an actual filled in kind of description of what the answer is. And then for flashcards, you have to be very, very careful here. Make sure you say an answer in your head 
to the flashcard before flipping over the flashcard. And I think it's harder to fall into this trap with practice questions, but it's very easy to fall into this trap with flashcards. So when you're about to flip a flashcard, wait, take a pause and make sure you've answered the question in your head. What's kind of on the other side of the flashcard? What do you think the answer is? Bottom line, active recall is tough. It should feel tough. When going over practice questions or flashcards, make sure you are actually having an attempt at the questions on your own before flipping over and seeing the answer. Tip number two is to understand the information before you use Active Recall. You should have a basic understanding of what you're testing yourself on before you test yourself on that information. I know this seems pretty straightforward, but again, I've mentioned this over and over and over again, you can't just go straight to flashcards. You can't just go straight to practice questions. You need to build a base of knowledge, otherwise kind of you're just gonna start memorizing answers or not really understanding what's going on. And unfortunately, I can't teach you how to understand everything. With the bazillion different things to learn and the bazillion different ways to learn them, you have to figure out for yourself what's the best way to learn information. If you want to know what I do, I'll link to my zero note strategy above, but in that zero note strategy, right, I'm previewing the information, so I'm getting a basic understanding on lecture slides, and then I'm viewing the information the next day in the lecture after reviewing it on my own to confirm that understanding before actually testing myself with practice questions the same day or later on that day when I actually see the lecture. Bottom line is you need to get a basic understanding of the topic before you do any form of self-testing. Tip number three is sleep on it. Why do I wait at least one day before beginning my active recall practice of the material? Well, studies show that a good night's sleep helps solidify memories and information in our brain. Not only that, but in a really cool study from Nature, it showed that overnight we are actually not only solidifying information, but our brain is creating new connections, coming up with new information while we sleep. And I wanna talk about this study a little bit just because of how cool it is. So basically you have two groups of participants and they're both taught this complicated algorithm for solving a math problem. Both groups are said to wait 12 hours before being tested on this once again. But one group, that 12 hours involves overnight, so they get a full night's sleep before being tested on this algorithm again. And then with the other group, the 12 hours is during the daytime, right? So not when they get a night's sleep. So just morning to night as opposed to night to next morning. Now, secretly, there is an easier, faster way to solve this problem, a secret equation, a secret answer to solving this problem more quickly quickly. Now, both groups of subjects were then retested 12 hours later. Remember, both groups are waiting 12 hours, but one group gets a night of sleep and one group does not get a night of sleep. Well, the group that had the sleep, right, came up with the solution two times as much as the group that did not sleep. That's crazy. In dreamland, our brain is creating new solutions, coming up with new ideas, not only solidifying information. That's why before I start testing myself on what I learned, I like to get a full night's sleep before that begins. So again, before my lectures, right, the night before, the day before, I've already previewed the material and gotten a basic understanding of that material. So that way when I show up to lecture and wanna start testing myself, I've had a night's sleep on an understanding already of the material. Bottom line, have a good night's sleep after first studying the material before you start testing yourself. Tip number four is practice questions and flashcards are number one. Practice questions and flashcards are the most evidence-based and well-studied ways to study and retain information with active recall. If you could only pick one, however, probably practice questions edge out flashcards by a little bit. When I would talk to my friends in medical school, anecdotally, the students that did more practice questions usually were correlated with higher grades. So bottom line, the best forms of active recall are practice testing and flashcards. Tip number five is you need to plan your studying. Yes, active recall and practice testing sound amazing, but how do we actually use it on a daily basis? Just saying to yourself, oh, I'm gonna review biology with active recall. That's a sure way to fail and not study. Where and what are the practice questions you'll be using? Are they in the textbook? Did the teacher give you some questions? Can you find an online resource with these practice questions? Which ones should you, should you do? Did the teacher recommend certain questions? Will the test be based off of certain questions? So think about all the questions you need to answer all the studying you need to do, and then I would divide it by the amount of time you have to study that information. So for example, if you were taking two classes during the week, uh, the night before the first class, right, I would 
preview and understand the information. Then the next day, I would show up to class, try and understand what's going on even more, and then you can start practice testing and using Active Recall. Now, the second night or the second day after you had that class, I would use Active Recall again to test yourself and kind of solidify this information. And then I would just repeat that for class two whenever class two is during the week. Bottom line, plan as precisely as possible what you will be studying at least one week before you actually need to study that information. Tip number six is capture your incorrect answers. Okay, so you're blasting through practice questions, you're flipping over billions and trillions of flashcards, and you can feel your brain really work on. You're using Active Recall well. How can we level up Active Recall even more? Well, simply, when you're doing practice questions and you get a question wrong, create a flashcard based off that incorrect practice question. Then, right, theoretically, you should never get that kind of practice question wrong again. Make sure you're creating a flashcard based on the actual piece of information that you don't understand as opposed to just the entire practice question, right? Because we want to be as efficient as possible in creating these flashcards. We don't want thousands and hundreds of thousands of flashcards. And I found this is a fantastic multiplier for test scores because you're uniquely matching, you're uniquely filling your own gaps in knowledge. And using this, I think, is really one of the best ways to make Active Recall the most efficient and effective for you as possible. Bottom line, create flashcards from the practice questions you got wrong. Only create flashcards based on the specific piece of information within the practice question that you didn't understand. Tip number seven is when using Active Recall, prioritize broader topics, then your incorrect questions, and then specific nitty gritty information. I learned this strategy, and this is probably one of the best strategies for learning in medical school because I just had so much information to learn and I didn't know where to start. I didn't know what information to learn first. And I actually started backwards. I started remembering little pieces of information, random facts of information before understanding the general concepts of what was going on. And that was wrong. I got to test day. I remember my first test day of medical school. And I was like, wait a second, they're not asking me to recite the specific fact I just learned. They're not asking me to know this random tiny piece of information. They want me to actually understand what's going on. The questions were tough. They required a deep understanding of the topic to connect facts, not just to know random specific facts. And I scored like pretty low on that test, probably actually my lowest score that I ever got on a medical school test. And at that point, I knew I needed to switch it up. And this is kind of the way this YouTube channel started, right? I realized, okay, wait, my studying strategies aren't necessarily right. There are better strategies. There's evidence-based strategies that work. So I switched to understanding first and then knowing the smaller random pieces of information. Okay, so we know we need to understand first, but when we use active recall, we should also be studying active recall questions, practice questions, flashcards that are more general too, then that get more specific. And usually textbooks and practice questions that your teachers give you are formatted in this way. The first ones are a little bit easier, a little bit more general, and then they get harder and more specific the farther you go on. So do it in that order. And also make sure as you're answering these harder questions that you understand kind of the basic pieces of information in the question. So bottom line, test yourself on the broader, more general topics before then moving on to the questions that you normally get wrong before then moving on to those specific little pieces of information that might bump your grade like a point or two. Finally, the last point about using Active Recall correctly is use the power of spaced repetition to make your Active Recall stick. So instead of doing a flashcard one day and then never doing it again, you'll do the flashcard one day, then maybe three days later, then if you get it right, maybe six days later, then if you get it right again, maybe 18 days later. That's distributed practice. And I cover this idea tons in my other videos. I'll link one up here. But the idea behind this is when we first learn a piece of information, we're gonna forget that information very, very quickly. Some studies show that you actually forget 50 percent of the information you learn within 20 minutes and then a total of 66 percent of the information the next day. So the only way to avoid this loss is to test ourselves at certain intervals, spaced repetition. Anki is an amazing computerized flashcard resource that I use all the time to help combat this, but really you just need to make sure you're studying this information at different periods of time. You can't just study the information from the beginning of the semester once and hope it's retained for the final exam. You need to review that information from the beginning of the semester a couple times throughout the semester before the final exam if you want it to stick around for the final exam. Bottom line is space out your active recall sessions of the same information on your way to the exam so you don't forget that information over time. Anki is a great resource for this. So I talk a lot about studying, but it's because it's what I'm passionate about. It's what most of my videos are about. 
I've always wanted to know how I can maximize my time spent studying by using the most efficient study techniques based off the evidence. My videos hopefully teach you how to study better. And I've made my most detailed study guide ever on a class I'm calling Study Smarter, Not Harder that's hosted on Nebula Classes. Nebula Classes is a platform I'm creating with a bunch of other creators. Going more into my class, my class has over 100 sources for a reason. I wanted to double, triple, quadruple check the information to make sure I'm providing you the highest quality information possible. I wanted to make a class that I wish I had when I was starting college, and this is that class. This course covers priming your brain for the best study session ever, which study techniques work and which study techniques don't work. And finally, I'll tell you how to actually integrate these study techniques into your real life. When you sign up using my link for Nebula classes, you not only get access to my class, but you get access to Thomas Frank's class on running a business as a creator, which I watched and it is awesome. And the great thing is there's a new class being released every single week. Finally, not only do you get access to tons of classes, but because Nebula classes is a part of Nebula, you also get full access to Nebula, which is where a bunch of YouTube creators put all their YouTube videos on, but completely ad free. Some creators like myself also put up exclusive to videos, to so videos you can only see on Nebula. And I even put all of my YouTube videos up on Nebula like one week early. So you could watch next week's YouTube video right now on Nebula. The whole thing is $149 per year, but if you sign up using my special link, which is nebulaclasses.com slash Zach Hiley, you can get access to it for $119 a year instead. So click on the button on screen or click on the link in the description and sign up today and you'll be helping not only me, but tons of other creators and you'll get access to some awesome stuff. Overall, Active Recall is what the best students use worldwide for a reason. Make sure you're using it right. Make sure you're efficient and effective and watch your grades go up. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Now a plant pot, that's, that's, that's meant to be your hat, right? A plant pot. Thank you.